the fifth in our series of videos looking at uh, the use of the meniscus map rain application. So the f this video is going to focus on looking at rainfall at location, so able to click on a specific area of a map and get rainfall for that particular location, and also looking at return period calculations. So um, if you go onto the what to show uh, rainfall at location, what you can do is, I'm just going to look at an area uh, in, in Brighton, so you can basically click on a map, set from the click, so you, first of all you click the map, set from click, that sets the eastings and northings for the particular location of interest. Alternatively, you can just manually enter the eastings and northings in. There are these codes here, the 549 and the 889. These are our own internal offsets from that we use uh, for delivering the data, and it refers to the actual grid of information, or grid of rainfall data. And that is information that you may want to use if you're going to use the API uh, at a certain point to be able to get data directly from the servers uh, and there'll be another tutorial explaining how to use that API but if it mentions about offsets these is where you get the offset data from so there's two options we can do we can set the first we can set the date range so I'm setting the date range for a period in June 2016 which I know is very wet um, and then we can just get the rainfall data for that particular location and there we have it. it says the rainfall intensity for that and that's the location that your, your clip we clicked on and again we can use the, uh, uh, the, the the mouse to zoom in and get that data and we can reset it as we've seen this in in previous vid videos on how to do this let me just move that bit up a bit um, so that gives us the rainfall intensity since millimeters per hour so we can see some pretty intense rain over 60 64 millimeters uh, per hour um, we can also get that rainfall data as in millimetres, so convert it from rain millimetres per hour into millimetres. And that allows us then to think about aggregating that data. So if I want to see actually see what that was on a daily basis, I can aggregate that uh, using the aggregation day function and we'll sum it, click the rainfall again, and we'll get a display of the data. So that gives us a 32.5, 32.48 millimetres of rain falling at that particular location on that day. So um, I'm going to just reset the aggregation data so that so we won't have any aggregation. Um, so I think that covers the uh, rainfall at location. Again if you want to look at let's say looking at Shoreham, set from click, get the rainfall intensity for that particular location. Uh, so that's a clearly a different data set, different day different locations so it, it, it shows the very specific rain event that actually went through Brighton on this particular day. So let me just clear that da data down. What we can also do is looking at getting the return period. So this is um, uses either the FEH 99 methodology or the Bingham methodology and it depends on whether we have the DFF coefficients for the particular location. So in this area we have those coefficients. So if I, again if I click on Portislade Village, set X and Y from the location, I'm just choosing a date. I've chosen the 7th of June, which is when we knew that we had some high rain rainfall. And it's calculating and showing A our point of interest and calculating the duration the maximum duration and the maximum rain event depth that resulted in the or sorry the duration and rainfall depth that led to the maximum rain event on that day which is about a 1 in 30 year storm. So it shows the DFF coefficients used to calculate the FEH. It tells you that this is an FEH type return period. It does acknowledge uh, the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology who have provided the DFF coefficients and it also displays a map or, or uh, sorry, a graph of the rainfall data for over the day before, the day of interest and the day after. Now, in the event that we had rain gauges available, which there is a rain gauge set on this data set, um, but it's way up in Derby, um, but if there are local rain gauges with local da with data which was available and we only have an EA rain gauge data from the 7th of February 2017 when it became public access, then this would show the calculated uh, re return period for that rain gauge so that you can compare your point of interest with your nearest rain gauge. Now I'm just going to jump onto a different uh, instance of map. Um, now this instance we we don't have the DFFs 
coefficients so I just wanted to show what would happen on this particular location so I'm going to click on a point in Cambridge for the return period uh, choose it at a point and I'm going to calculate the rain event for the 8th of June and again here we can see that there is this is the depth of rain this is the duration of rain this is the depth of rain that fell at this particular point of location and it's calculating a 1.3 year return period using the Bingham method this time so we're calculating that data using a Bingham method because we don't have access to those DFF coefficients and in the event that this is an EA rain gauge here but we don't have any data because this particular point was before the time that we had rain uh, data available from EA under an open data set um, uh, open gov data set so I hope that that gives you an explanation of the meniscus uh, rainfall at location and return period calculations. So thank you very much for your time.